Hello there and welcome to episode 25 of the TW Twins Twins Save from then to now, where we take the World Wrestling Federation from 1992 to the modern day. If that's something you're interested in, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to try and make to try and you know boost the channel so we can get more people enjoying this amazing save. It helps so much. But so this episode we have got the fight the start of the road towards King of the Ring, including the King of the Ring tournament itself. The last episode was Saturday night's main event, main evented by the horsemen beating Hart, Hogan and Warrior after The Undertaker attacked Hogan and Michaels pinned Brett. Good stuff. I'm excited to see where we go from this, but where are we holding this episode of Superstars? Well, this episode is going to be something slightly a little different, because we're going to be holding this episode in Puerto Rico. The Estadio Juan Holamón Luberel. In Bayamón, Puerto Rico. Should be good fun. Let's get into the show. And the broadcast starts with Jack Tunney on the screen. And he addresses the in-universe death this week of the legendary Lou Fez. One of the greatest wrestlers, the, the original, one of the original world champions in wrestling. And he announces that as the World Wrestling Federation wants to represent wrestling as a whole. This will be the start of the Wrestling Hall of Fame. And our first induction will be the legend himself, Lou Fez. Thank you. And it's basically just Jack Tunney. We're just addressing it. A very important figure in wrestling in the universe. In this universe has died. I think he's absolute. And I think, you know, it's kind of how the real WWE... Hall of Fame started was when Andre died the next year. I think Lou Fez is just as important. I don't think it's unfair to say Lou Fez could start this Hall of Fame up. But then we get our normal starting to an episode of Superstars. Ladies and gentlemen, your opening contest today is a King of the Ring quarter final match. And it is Kama versus the Warlord. And it goes just under eight minutes. And it is Kama who picks up the win. Pinning the Warlord with a Death Valley driver. A 54 for Kama. 49 for the Warlord. The Warlord was always only in this tournament to take a pin in the first round. But a 58 overall. Great stuff. Speaking of great stuff, we've got the Genius and the Beverly Brothers in the ring. The Genius is pissed off that they're not being used as much on Superstars as he would like. So he issues a challenge for anyone to come out and face him, the Genius, and he will show you just how much brain is better than brawn. And, well, brawn comes out because it's Cactus Jack. Making his debut in the save. His, I got him at the end of his contract with WCW. Some of their WCW contracts came up, so I bought them in. There will be more people coming in the next, probably in the post King of the Ring build to SummerSlam. There will be some more big names coming in, which I am so excited for. Gets a 63 rating. And Cactus Jack just beats the genius, goes really quick, hits the double arm DDT, gets a 52 rating, a 61 for Jack, puts him solidly in our mid card, not in the Intercontinental mid card, because Bret Hart really skewed that up to be really high up. But I think by this time next year, I think Cactus Jack will be in the mid card title picture. We have a R. Oh, Technical challenge for the Sergeant Slaughter's boot camp. Basically, this is amateur wrestling. Slaughter himself got amateur wrestling background. 
And it's, and it's going to be two matches. Jeff Jarrett beats Scotty Riggs. And Jacobs beats Brian Lawler. Not through technical prowess. Just basically due to sheer power. It's an 81 rating. As I said, these guys are... I'm having fun with this storyline. And we will be seeing more of these guys later in the show. So we've got a little fun segment here. So Owen Hart was taken out by Yokozuna, but hit with a bonsai drop on Saturday night's main event. So Coco Beware has found Max Moon, another person with a lot of history with Fujigun, and they both tried together to take out Yokozuna. And they fail. Miserably. Coco Beware himself were in the backstage area, so Yokozuna climbs up onto one of those rolling crates. Fuji holding it still and John Nord. And he hits the Bunsai drop from off one of those. Max Moon has bailed at this point, leaving Coco Beware lying there. Gives a 50 rated, not too bad. So, Intercontinental title picture being set up here. Shawn Michaels comes out and challenges Bret Hart for an Intercontinental Championship shot at King of the Ring because he pinned him. And he, he isn't interrupted by Bret Hart, he's interrupted by the Mountie and the Hart First Family. Mountie comes out and he's like, I would be Intercontinental Champion right now if it wasn't for you. So why the hell should you get a shot before me? No, I want to. I want you out of the picture. So I am challenging Bret Hart in two weeks' time on Superstars to a steel cage match for the Intercontinental Championship to keep you out. Just leave it with me and Bret. And I will show the Mountie always gets his man. Bret Hart comes out and, he, and he's chatting to both guys. He's like, Mountie, I mean, you say you want a steel cage match. I, I didn't even know Sean attacked you. I haven't gone back and watched the show yet. I'm sorry that happened to you, but a steel cage match? Really? You want that? Half of the reason you even had stood a chance in that match is because of the nasty boys... Jimmy Hart and Carl Ouellette are ringside. But hey, if you want to lock them out and just leave it me and you, I will take those odds. So yeah, I'll, I'll accept your shot for two subs, but I know I'm going to beat you. I know I can beat you. I'm the best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. So, I accept your challenge. But Sean... I also accept your challenge. And hey, should the Mountie end up beating me, I'm sure he will accept your challenge too. He wants to get his hands on you. Let's be realistic here. It's going to be Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels at King of the Ring. The Mountie is a non-factor. The Mountie is obviously pissed off at that comment. And he basically charges up the ramp and tries to attack Brett with the Nasty Boys. Brett starts to get beaten down and Shawn Michaels just sits on the on the turnbuckle and laughs as he watches this. It's a 73 rating, not too bad. Ultimate Warrior gets a big promo here and he is challenging Ric Flair for a match at King of the Ring. Simple as that. It's just Ultimate Warrior wants a singles match at King of the Ring. He's not in the tournament. He's not really in any title pictures. He just wants a shot at Ric Flair. Gets an 100 rating. Great stuff. Bob Backlund's backstage chatting to people, saying hi, he's back. And he gets attacked by the Iron Sheik, locked in the camel clutch. And Sheik shouts at him, 
I put you down, I will do it again. You are not the man you once were. Whereas I am ten times the man I was. Guess 50 will race a segment as we continue this Backland vs. Sheik story. We get a backstage interview with Gene Oakland and the Road Warriors. And they are challenging Miracle Violence Connection for a match at King of the Ring. Williams and Gordy end up overhearing this and they come into shot and they're like, Yo, we're not we're not cowards. We know you're we you are one of the best tag teams of all times. But so are we. So yeah, at King of the Ring, you've got your match. It's the Road Warriors versus Miracle Violence Connection. Guess an 89 rated. Good stuff. And we get part two of Sergeant Slaughter's Boot Camp Challenge. We start off for a third place match because obviously, you know, we give points for position. We need a third place match. As Brian Lawler defeats Scotty Riggs. And in the final, Jeff Jarrett defeats Glenn Jacobs. Gets an 80 rated for this segment. Slaughter's been the referee in all of these matches, which is fun. But yep, the leaderboard for this week goes Jarrett, Jacobs, Lawler, Riggs. Not too bad. And then we get Jack Tunney and Vince McMahon chatting to the camera together. Vince McMahon in his announcer guys here. He's not President Vince McMahon or Chairman Vince McMahon. He is there as an announcer basically because they're announcing some special things that are happening this month on the build up to King of the Ring. Jack Tunney announces that yes, this Saturday night to make up for there not being a Saturday night's main event this month on ESPN there will be a rerun of WrestleMania. Big news there. And also a special treat for our Japanese fans. The fourth week of Superstars this week, this month, the Go Home Show for King of the Ring will take place in Korokan Hall. In Tokyo. We're going to Japan for a special one-off show. And that is and that is on the build towards King of the Ring, which is which is going to be a great show. We've still got one more quarter final tonight. I'm excited, I hope you guys are too. And that is the spe that is the announcements for this month. We then get a bit of an interesting segment. Monsoon, Savage and Hina are chatting about those announcements just made. When Hulk Hogan jumps over the barricade and essentially kidnaps Randy Savage. He basically chats to them, he, go, he, he chats to Grillo, he's like, Sorry Grillo, I just need to chat to Savage for a second. And basically just drags off Randy Savage to the back. And they're chatting backstage and it's we can't really hear what they're saying. Neither of them might. We've got a camera a bit far or a bit further away, so we can't actually hear them. When suddenly they get jumped by the Undertaker. The Undertaker comes in, he, he lays out both men, he starts beating them down. Hogan's out, Savage is locked out. Undertaker does his eyes rolling back in his head, slashes across the throat. And picks up Randy Savage and hits a tombstone pile driver backstage on Savage. Hogan is out. Savage is out. Pretty good big stuff. And our second King of the Ring match for tonight, the second quarterfinal, sees the Bulldog. Defeat to Tanka. Again, just under 8 minutes, 7.38. With the big running power slam. Which I think actually is this Tatanka's wrestling wrestling historians in the comment. I know there's a few of you. You've really helped me out with some of the bits where I've because obviously 
I wasn't alive when any of this happened. I've only watched it retrospectively. So as such, the dates aren't as fixed in my mind. Would this count as Tatanka's undefeated streak being broken? I may have broken it already. I can't actually remember. But does this count as Tatanka losing for the first time? Or had he already lost at this point? Wrestling historians, let me know in the comments below. But it gets a 67 rating, a 69 for Bulldog, 58 for Tatanka. IRS has been doing some great work as a road agent for us whilst him and Ted DiBiase are out. And the main event of this show, well, main event match, sees the team of Ric Flair and Shawn Michaels take on the Hart families, Mounty and Carl Ouellette. And it is Michaels who picks up the win. Pinning Ouellette with the diving elbow drop. Flair got a 94. Amazing stuff. Mounty gets a 76. 78 for Michaels. Ouellette obviously gets the weakest of 33. We know he's going to he's going to be struggling. But we are going to try and put him in big segments more. Big matches more to try and get him up. Because you know, it's PCO. He's a great guy. He's a great worker. Even 30 years later. Gets a 79 rated. And then the final segment. Shouldn't have been here. This should not have been the final segment. This was supposed to be much earlier in the show. I thought I was a bit confused that that shouldn't have been the main event. This was supposed to... Imagine this was much earlier in the show. We get... The... The, the smoking guns. Good cowboy slick. And slick's doing the talking. And the Bushwhackers and the Natural Disasters both take offence to Slick calling the Smoking Guns the greatest tag team currently in the WWF. He laughs off the Bushwhackers, but, you know, there's a little bit of a cowering from Slick at the Natural Disasters. They are big boys. Who knows, I guess a 60 rating. Shouldn't have been here. That might tank this show. What did we get overall? It's an 89. Okay, it doesn't tank us too bad. Those big segments. This was an angle heavy show. There was only three matches on, four matches on this card. Everything else was angles. Which is insane. But yeah, it was a very angle. Well, technically, it was another four matches in angles with the technical challenge. It's a very talky show. And yet, just imagine this was down here, around around Catchers Jack match. That makes more sense. But what did you guys think of the show? Let me know in the comments down below. Give me your ratings, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye!